folks. After finishing this video, you might think that I have gone completely insane and I'm just another raving madman and you know what? I wouldn't even hold it against you. This will be a short video as there is barely any image material to go with it, but today I want to present my theory to you about why Victoria 3 Warfare will not at all be what you are expecting. Most of the content of this video is speculative, so be advised to take it with a massive rock of salt rather than as fact. I have never talked about this on the channel, but I am an anti-army micro-radical. I believe that outmaneuvering the AI in grand strategy games completely misses the point of warfare as it is primarily a gamey representation of tactics. It does what it is supposed to by determining who comes out as the winner of a war, but does not actually cover the logistics of war, the scouting that takes place, the skirmishes, the pillaging or the peculiar decisions individual commanders might make. I have long since suggested privately and on my discord that a new system must be created that can more accurately depict the true cost of war as well as what it really takes to win. Now let's take a look at why I believe that Victoria 3, a game that so far has had the developers say that they will not yet talk about warfare at all, will take army warfare in a direction that I wanted to see it go for a long time now. Victoria 3, this is confirmed, will have more individual provinces, so the smallest level of territory, than Hearts of Iron 4. Just one look at the map of Hearts of Iron 4 will show what an absolute nightmare it would be to siege, maneuver and find a good spot to do battle on such a map but without Hearts of Iron 4's frontline system. Especially in the early period of the century that Viki 3 will cover, frontline warfare was simply not a thing either. There have also been many discussions about how Victoria 3 would handle the transitions from battle-based warfare to trench-based warfare. And then I saw this, strategic region, the Andes. Now, you might believe this to be nothing, but my theory essentially says that we will not be microing our armies or that there will be any automation of army microing. Frankly, army micro will simply not exist. Instead, a war will open up a strategic region into which you and your enemy will send the troops that you believe to be necessary to win the conflict. The troops will then do proper strategic and tactical maneuvers and in the early game eventually fight one or several battles that will lead to the victory of one side and the defeat of the other. I am sure that, in some way, the player will be able to influence these events by making strategical decisions, troop composition decisions, as well as selecting a commander based on traits that will predict his overall war theater strategy. In the late game, the warfare within such a strategic region will primarily be trench-based and see the gruesome, manpower-grinding warfare that occurred in the terrible reality of World War I. The player's responsibility in both of these scenarios will be primarily related to supplying a frontline with resources so that fighting can continue in the best condition possible. That would mean such things as guns, tanks, planes, telegraphs, phones, rations and surely various other things connecting warfare directly to the economy which it is intrinsically connected to. Ensuring that this supply is produced and then arrives at the front line by securing shipping routes and such would be vital. It would also mean that the days of an empire fighting on multiple front lines and simply ignoring the ones that it is the least likely to get pieced out at would be gone for good. I understand that we all like cheesing the AI but I think I want to really stress it is cheese even at the end of the day. Especially trench-based warfare that requires many many lives to be kept up could quickly lead to the collapse of the economy as it would eat up resources and lives that beforehand were producing goods. It would lead to depopulated areas and so on and so forth. Again, I want to stress the following. I personally believe that this is very very roughly what we will see in Victoria 3 but please do not take this for fact. Ideas like this are cheap but the implementation and whether the system would even work are a totally different beast. If this is the warfare implementation of Viki 3, I personally would be very, very happy. But who knows? For the moment, it's just a theory. A game theory. Now, do you agree? Do you disagree? What is your take on that anyway? Do let me know in the comments. And with that, I would like to thank the members of the channel, namely the Barons, the Counts and the Dukes. Thank you all for being here so that I can publish raving lunacy like this one. For now, later. Alligator.